Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Extend Script tutorial. In this one, I'm gonna show you how to make a layer shredder inside of After Effects. Now this script will be very simple. It'll take any image or video you select and you can select how many times you would like to shred it. In my case, let's say I'd like to shred it 11 times. So I can click on it and it's going to create it into 11 different rows here. And then we can do whatever we want. Take these pieces, move them around, create an interesting looks by splitting faces and putting them together. There's a whole lot of possibilities that uh, I've used practically this kind of script for. So let's go over how we can make it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by creating a new JavaScript file in Extend Script, and let's begin coding. So first we need to quickly create a UI for our project. So I'm just gonna say main window is equal to a new window, and this is gonna be a palette type window. We're gonna call it the layer shredder. And the size of it is going to be undefined because it will auto generate here. Then we don't really need to make a group for these elements. We can just go ahead and apply them to the main window, but we want to make sure they go from left to right. So what we need to do is grab our main window and set the orientation equal to a row. So it'll, it'll sort everything in a row format. Then we can create our edit text box. We can just say edit text is equal to our main window. We're going to add an element called edit text the undefined size, and the default text it's going to say is the number of stacks we want. This way we can use a minimal amount of UI elements and uh, just get to the scripting. Then we'll have a button for the shredding, and this will be our added to our main window. We're going to add a button, undefined size, and it's going to say shred. Then to see our UI, we need to grab our main window variable or whatever you named it and say show. And while we're at it, we should also center it in the middle of the window. So now if I go ahead and run it, you can see that we have our UI looking exactly the same as the example I gave. Now we just need to go through and do some basic math and masking to apply these masks and create the effect. So the thing that's gonna initiate everything in our script is gonna be our button. So we'll take our button variable and call an onClick function, which anything we do when we click on the button is gonna happen inside of here. So I could say alert hello, and when I click on the button, it's gonna tell me hello. Basically, any, any code we put inside of here is going to be where it runs when we click on the button. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is create uh, some undo groups. I'm going to say app.begin undo group. And inside of here, I'll put the text that it will display if I'd like to undo. It'll say undo and then whatever text I put. <coughs> so I'm just going to call this uh, shred layers. And then I need to end it as well by saying app.end undo group without a string. So any code we put in between here will not only activate when we click on the button, but it will also be easily undoable by pressing Control Z or undo. And then we need a composition object, which we're going to assume they have a composition open and a clip somewhere inside um, that we're gonna use. So we're gonna say comp is equal to our app.project.activeItem. And that assumes that you've clicked on this and it's a composition. Then we need our layer to split, which we're just going to assume there's one of them. And the reason we're gonna do that is just so to keep it simple. If you wanted to have multiple, you could just simply pre-compose them and select that pre-comp as the layer. So I'm gonna say our layer is equal to comp.layer1, because in this case we have one layer. If we want, we could actually say dot selected layers and say index zero. This assumes you've selected one layer and that layer that's selected is the one we're gonna use. And then I'm gonna create a variable called stacks, which is going to basically be the return for our function that creates all of these um, shredded rows. So basically what this is gonna be is our custom function. And our custom function is gonna be called create stacks. And then down below here, I'm also going to define it, create stacks. And then inside of here, we're going to run all of the code to generate the masks, apply the masks, and then we're going to return all of the layers that it's generated. So there's three things. We only need two, but we're going to send three things into the arguments. We're going to need our composition, our layer, and then we're also going to need our edit text inputs, which we're going to assume is an integer. If the user puts in some text like it has now, it's going to mess up. But we'll say parse int which means to parse a string of text into an integer, because if I say put in 12 right here, it is a number, but the program recognizes this as a string of letters, not numbers. So we need to convert that using parse int, and we need to grab the edit text dot text, which will refer to the text within the element itself. The reason I said you only need two is because you could ignore the composition, because you can grab a composition by saying layer dot containing comp. 
And at the same time, our comp is also assumed to be the active item. And as we go into this function here, the active item is not going to change. So we really don't need to do it, but we're gonna keep things clean here. Now we need to bring in the arguments to the actual create stacks function. We're gonna have a comp, a layer, and then we'll just say a num because we're gonna just divide this and get a different variable. So basically the num stacks we want is gonna be equal to our comp height divided by the number we select. So let's say our composition height here is 1080. We wanna divide that by the number we input, so 12. This means that each of the um, elements that we create or shred is gonna be 90 pixels high. So we're basically getting the height of the stacks. So let's change it to like stack height to be a little bit more accurate this time around. And we're gonna set this equal to our comp.height divided by our num. And just to keep things clean, I'm going to say math.floor and make sure we get a nice solid integer rather than any decimals. Then we need to have a variable for our x and y axis. So I'm gonna say var x is equal to zero and var y is equal to zero. Um, this is gonna be an iterative variable in that each time we go through a for loop in a second, we're gonna increase um, what y is. So we can say y is zero, stack goes here. Y is now 90, a stack goes here. Y is now 180, a stack goes here. So hopefully that will make sense. We're also gonna create a variable called D layer, which is gonna be our duplicated layer. We need to duplicate this original layer a certain number of times to create these stacks. And then we're also going to need a shape variable. So I'll say shape is equal to a new shape object. And inside of here, we're gonna store the data for the vertices of our shredded layers. Oh, and of course we need a variable for the layer mask. Um, to represent the variable as we go in there. So then we're gonna create a for loop to go through and create the number of stacks um, that we want. So I'm gonna actually change this num here to stacks because that's what it is. And that's actually what we're gonna loop through is the number of stacks. So say we put in 12, we need to go through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And each time through, duplicate the original layer, apply the mask, and then uh, make sure it's all good. So I'm gonna create a variable called i for this for loop and set it equal to one. And for i is less than or equal to our stacks, increment i by one. So the first thing we're gonna do is get our layer to duplicate. So our D layer is gonna be equal to our current layer that we brought in with our argument up there. And we're gonna duplicate it. Then what we should probably do so we don't duplicate a thousand layers and have all this audio stacking up, we wanna set the audio enabled equal to false. This way all of the audio is sh shut off and not gonna make a ton of noise. Then we can go ahead and name our duplicate layer so everything doesn't have the same name. So I'll grab my D layer and set the name equal to say duplicate underscore I. And I'll say I to string just so make sure we get a good name there. And this is basically gonna call it duplicate one, duplicate two, et cetera, et cetera, just to keep it nice and organized. Now what we're gonna do is set up our mask shape for the given layer. To do this, I'm gonna grab my shape dot vertices and we're gonna set this equal to a new set of vertices. We're gonna need four, basically one in the top left corner, one in the bottom left, one in the bottom right, and one in the top right. So because we need four, we're gonna create four pairs of brackets in here, or just four brackets. And now we're gonna do a little bit of math and visualization. Basically, the first vertex is gonna be the top left. When we're starting off, that's gonna be equal to zero, zero. If we look at our info panel here, you can see up here, it starts at about zero, zero X, Y, which you can see it changing. So that is actually equal to our X and Y. So we can safely say that our X and Y are the first vertex. Then we're gonna go to the bottom left vertex. The only difference between this and the previous, which was just X, Y, is that we've gone down on the Y axis. Well, what have we added here to change it? The X value hasn't changed at all. So we can safely say X is the same, it's on the same X coordinate here, but the Y value has increased quite a bit here by about 180. So what this actually is, is our stack height. We need to end it at the height of our stack. So then I'll say Y plus our stack height. Then the third set is going to be over here on the bottom right. This has a different X and a different Y than our origin of just X, Y. The difference now is we're also taking the original zero Y and adding our height. So we know our Y height is gonna be Y plus stack height, but the X is all the way over here. Um, and just using a little bit of logic, we can actually calculate this. This is simply saying that um, X here is our comp.width. So we can grab comp.width 
and set that accurately. And then the last one is gonna be the top right here where our X is also the comp width and our Y is back to zero which uh, completes our set of vertices here. If that didn't make sense, I'm basically just interpolating um, from the origin point how it changes um, each iteration through. And now that that's been done, we can't just stop there because if we set these values for each of the masks, every single layer is gonna be up here on the top and not have masks further and further down. In order to get past this, what we need to do is grab our Y variable that is representative of the height of everything and we're going to increment it. We're gonna to add to itself the stack height by saying y plus equals stack height. So that means the next time through, the next first vertice is actually gonna start about here. And what that actually practically means is the next vertex is gonna start here, go down to the bottom left here, and just continue the process and keep incrementing over and over. But uh, we have created this shape object with the vertices, we actually need to apply it to the layer. So the first thing I'll do is grab my layer mask variable, and we're gonna take our duplicate layer, and we need to apply a mask to it. So I'll grab my dlayer.masks, and I'm gonna add a property called a mask. And the last thing we need to do is set the value of our layer mask equal to the shape we just calculated. So say layer mask.property, Adobe mask shape, and we're gonna set the value to be our shape. All right, so I think this should be properly set up now. Make sure I have a composition with some footage here, and I'm going to run the script. Let's this time select something crazy, like 100 stacks, and hit shred. And as you can see, it's created 100 layers extremely quickly. All of the audio is off, luckily, and everything appears to be nice and cut out. You can see we can start removing some elements and there's an effect where I'm removing things, but the background isn't always changing. It's because we need to make sure this original clip is turned off. So finally, to finish out this script, what we'll do is we'll go back into our uh, button click here. And after we've created all of our stacks, which by the way, we never actually used, so we can just get rid of that. After that, what we're gonna do is turn off that original layer by saying layer.enabled is equal to false. And now if I run it, select the number of shreds and shred it. We now get the effect and it looks great. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this week's quick tip tutorial. That's how you make an image shredder for After Effects. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave the thumbs up button. Be sure to head on over to GitHub in the description to check out more cool scripts and secret projects in the works. As always, subscribe if you'd like to be notified of new videos coming out every Monday and Thursday. And I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.